would just like to say Kevin Garnett was so good that I didn't know he was an actual basketball player. <laughs> okay, so I have a question about that. When they were showing actual NBA footage of him playing in the game, you thought that was, thought was wow, that was a great reenactment. Yeah, I was like, it's Hollywood, baby. We can make anything happen. <laughs> like, it- Hey guys, welcome back to Have You Seen, starring me, Julius De La Cruz, and me, Kajan Zendi. Yay! We are film fans, and we love to talk about films. So, today, on episode two of Have You Seen, we're going to be talking about Uncut Gems. Yes! The trailer for Uncut Gems. Do you remember what it was like, what you thought, initial thoughts when you saw it? This might be a previous impression that i got from the um is it softy south softy brothers i can never pronounce my last name brothers safety yeah Yeah, this might be a previous impression i got from good times but first of all i'll tell you that i've never seen a bad a24 film (laughs) i don't think ever like i would love to work for that company because they are like on it um so when i saw the title come up in the when i first saw this in theaters well when i saw the trailer in theaters immediately i was like done here take my money like I don't even care I'm like that comes up and I'm like good it looked very stressful but what intrigued me about it is that the trailer made it seem kind of like a heist movie Mm -hmm. almost like a bank heist movie or like a hustle movie uh and so I think that's what got me uh intrigued the other thing too is that I it's really difficult to make people laugh and I don't think I don't think audiences realize how difficult it is to be a comedian. So yeah. whenever I see a comedian in a dramatic role, I'm I'm automatically intrigued because they they work so hard to make you laugh that they're on. Like a lot of people are surprised when comedians do dramatic roles, but it's really not that surprising because it's a lot more difficult to be a comedian than it is to be a dramatic actor. Yeah, I mean, most personally, most, I think so. Most people don't understand how smart comedians are. And they're always observing. The funny thing about comedians is always their observations of human behavior. An actor, you'll be able to project that or show that when you act, right? Because you that's all you do. You really observe that in everyday life, whether it's comedy or even drama. And most of the comedy comes from drama, right? Or tragedy. Yeah. yeah. The other thing, too, is that in my acting classes, there's always the people that are that that's their first class like the the people that are taking that acting class for the first time they automatically want to do comedy right because they're like oh that's where all the the, all the fun movies have like the monologues all the comedic movies have monologues yeah yeah. um and what my teacher said this last uh the last class i was in he was like before you pick he told the whole class he's like you can pick whatever you want and he's like but i'm telling you right now don't pick a comedy because he's like, <laughs> you're not going to be funny enough. <laughs> so he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like, try, and then, you know, a lot of people are always so amazed when, like, when I'm in these, especially when I'm in beginning classes and I cry in a monologue and people are like, oh my God, that's amazing. It's like, no, it's not. It's it's a lot easier than you think to, to cry than to make someone laugh. That's really, really difficult. Yeah. Uh, so automatically when I saw Adam Sandler, I was like, yeah, man, let's see. <laughs> Let's see what this guy does, you know, with like, comedian. I mean, he was great. I love Punch Drunk Love. I don't know if you've ever seen that. That was a dramatic role and he was fantastic in it. So I knew yeah. that he was going to be good in this one too. Hey, even his comedies were, he's very heartfelt and emotional. Like even Click, I think Click made me sad at times or the, the very ending. I never saw like, that one. Oh, you guys see? I know. I was like, everybody, I feel like everybody's seen that, but I haven't seen yeah. it. <laughs> so you mentioned in the trailer, Kijan, A24. And for me, anytime I see A24 in a movie, that that means that something tragic is going to happen, right? Yeah, you know, I didn't think about it until you mentioned it. But it's always going to be true. gritty and, and, and something bad is going to happen and you're going to be like feeling a, a sense of anxiety during the film. Because Midsommar was A24, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Midsommar, Hereditary. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, it, it, you're right. Every single one of them um they tend to do these very like 
get to you stories that yeah. are <laughs> yeah something tragic is gonna happen for sure and you were you were a fan of midsummer i love midsummer okay i thought it was gorgeous i mean i'm a i'm a big fan of horror movies in general yeah. um but what i love about that movie is that he completely broke that uh ari aster the director completely mm. broke the rules for a horror movie. So horror movies usually have a color palette. They have a lighting palette that they usually, that they typically use. And did you see it? I did, I did. Yeah, and this just completely, you know, like it throws you off because it's such a bright, beautiful setting. Oh yeah, yeah. Where and you're like, wow, look how sunny it is and all these pretty colors. And, and then it's this like horrific scene happening yeah. in the movie. It's like when they play those old timey songs and then it, they slow it down and it makes it scarier yeah it's it's oh. crazy and so it's um it was real i thought it was very creative and the beginning where those two slides open up oh i like that i do yeah i love that so you mentioned for you you were hooked on adam sandler for me i'm a big basketball fan so when yeah. i saw kevin garnett was part of the movie and he wasn't playing an actor or a character he was playing Kevin Garnett. I was like, how does this tie into real life? So this is, that's the reason why I like the, um, I wanted to see the movie was because Kevin Garnett was in it. Even though I will say, I am not the biggest Kevin Garnett fan. I would always root against him, except when he played against the Lakers. So that's my take. Uh -huh. Now let's talk about um, the release. I was a little bit confused about how they released this film because I thought, it was going straight to Netflix. I didn't think it was going to be in a theater. No, it wasn't intended for Netflix. I think they they I think they eventually ended up adding it. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, the quarantine might have had something to do with it. I thought it was added rather quickly for a for a new movie. When was the release date? Um, it was released in on I think on Christmas on the 25th, on December 25th um, of this past year of 2019. Mm -hmm. They actually, I, my parents have a place in, in Rosarito in Mexico and we go there often. And we went down there like a month after it was released in theaters and it was already on Netflix in Mexico. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know if you know this, but like Netflix has, it, depending on which country you're in, you can, there's like certain releases for each country. Yeah, different so, like, content. We didn't have it, but they had it. And uh, I was like so stoked. I'm like, oh my God, I'm just <laughs> gonna watch Uncut Gems. Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so it was released in theaters as a theatrical release on the 25th. Adam Sandler did a great job in this film. There was okay. something that you had told me before about him not being able to be nominated for an Oscar. I thought he was robbed of a nomination. Uh when you see when you hear actors when they make their acceptance speech and they always say like, oh, it's an honor just to be nominated. Yeah. It sounds cheesy, but it's true. It's the, the nomination is enough. It's, it's just a, like, in my opinion, like it's just as good as winning. Yeah. Because if you get the nomination, people, there's people who never watch movies throughout the year and then watch the Oscars and then go watch all the movies that were nominated. Oh, that's me. <laughs> and so, yeah, and, and that's where they get the most attention because there is this quote unquote certified organization telling you that it is to their standards. So uh -huh. if these people that do nothing but watch movies for a living say that it's a good movie, it must be a good movie. Yeah. And the same goes for actors. And so the Academy is allowed, I believe they're allowed 10 actors in the best actor category. That's a match. Um, that's a max. Okay. That's a max. Yeah. Okay. So they're allowed up to 10 actors. What really made me upset about this is that these past Oscars, they only nominate. Mm. And so it would have cost them nothing to nominate Adam Sandler. Like literally nothing. All they had to do was throw his name in there. there. They didn't even have to give spots left. There was two spots left. Got it. Got it. Completely empty. They didn't nominate him. And we can talk about this later. I'm sure I'll, I'll make you watch it eventually, but <laughs> Eddie Murphy was also not nominated. And oh, I thought that was another, I mean, like, yeah. he was so incredible. Um, he starred in, in a movie, it's a Netflix movie called Dolomite Is My Name. Mm -hmm. um, it's a true story about a black comedian who 
makes a movie for black exploitation in the 70s. Yeah. Um, it, by the way, if you guys are in a sad mood or like in a bad mood, watch that movie. It's such oh. a feel good movie. Okay. It's so sweet and it's like, it's so funny and it's got fantastic actors, like lots of cameos. Snoop Dogg makes a cameo. Yeah. Um, and they're just, it's like a really, it's, a, it's one of those follow your dream movies. Oh. So I thought both of those actors were were robbed of it. I mean, it would have cost them nothing to nominate them, and they didn't. So I don't know why. Um, so that really upset me. And the other reason that I was upset is people always, you can't win as a comedian, because people always tell you, oh, he never does anything different. And then when you do something different, they don't recognize you for it. Well, it's kind of like you really excel at a certain genre. Mm -hmm. And if you try to move over a lane, people will say, stay in your lane, right? Yeah. Jim Carrey, I felt the same way about Truman Show. I thought he did an amazing job in that song, in that movie. And Eternal Sunshine. Yeah. I, I felt he could have been nominated for that role, too. He was so, the way he portrayed that character was very vulnerable, which yeah. as a comedian, imagine thinking about how did this guy from In Living Color go into this role and play this heartbroken character. Yeah, those are two, you know, Adam Sandler and Jim Carrey, those are two very goofy guys. Yeah. I mean, so I over the top silly. Mm -hmm. And man, when they do drama, do they do it well? I mean, they were they're were both so they're so good when they do it. Yeah. And again, that goes back to the whole yeah, it's hard to make pe they've already done the hardest thing, which is make people laugh. So, mm -hmm. you know, what the the, the drama just kind of comes naturally to them all right the rest of the cast who else is in this movie we so, talked about kevin garnett a little bit right kevin garnett um i have a really funny story that i've told you before go ahead so i went to go see this movie when it came out <laughs> i'm gonna tell our viewers listeners good. like what a dummy i am when it comes to sports like i i don't know anything about sports um we i have a podcast with our other friends, Ivan and Justin, uh, Microwave Cop po uh, Podcast, which I'll tell you about at the end, but our first episode was on Kobe Bryant. And you should listen to that episode just to know how dumb I am when it comes to sport. Like, I had no idea he was around for so long. I had no idea. <laughs> like, I didn't even know what age he was. I was just like so confused. Um, I Rest went to go Kobe, see- Kobe, by the way. Rest What's up? Rest in peace, Kobe. Yeah, I know. It's, it's such a bummer you would not believe the lack of sports knowledge I have. So we go to, I went to go see this movie opening day. Like I went to go see it on, on Christmas, I think. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching the film and I'm like, I like this guy. Like I've never seen him before. I like him. Like he's doing a good job. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I wonder why I've never heard of him before. Whatever. So. He's a really tall actor. That's, that's all I see of him. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like, he's doing great. Yeah, I don't know why I haven't seen him. So I'm, this, I'm at this dinner party um, that same week. And I'm like, oh my God. And I'm talking to my other, to another friend about it. And my friend goes, yeah, I remember that game. And I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> he's like, and he's like, yeah, Kijan, that's a real, that was a real game. And that's an actual basketball player. So oh my gosh. I would just like to say Kevin Garnett was so good that I didn't know he was an actual basketball player. <laughs> okay, so I have a question about that. When they were showing actual NBA footage of him playing in the game, you thought that was, I thought it was wow, That was a great reenactment. Yeah, I was like, it's Hollywood, baby. We can make anything happen. <laughs> like, it's, we can do this, yeah. We no, got PGI, we oh uh, got everything. Yeah, I thought it was like staged and then they put him, you know, like, I, or I thought it was like footage uh -huh. and then they maybe for the close-ups like reshot him or something. Oh, oh yeah. Idea. Okay. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. But when my friend said that, you know, that math lady meme where she's like thinking and there's all these like equations around her. I, I know the other one where it's the little kid or I don't, I think he's a little kid, but he's just like, yeah okay that was my reaction when my friend was like yeah i remember that game i was like wait a minute and i'm like putting it together and <laughs> look oh my god it's a real <laughs> basketball player um but yeah he was great uh all, other great cameos and actors uh Adina what, Michelle. lakeith 
Slicky Stanfield, who is oh my god, always, always. I mean, I I love that guy. I will say this: that is the shortest I've ever seen him in a movie. Norm- oh, yeah, are you talking you know, about like, tight He was like the tallest guy in the room, so I was like. <laughs> He looked so t- I mean, I guess he's standing next to a basketball player that I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. holy crap, he looks so short. Judd Hirsch, who you know from Independence Day, um, he plays uh, the the dad and what's his name? Uh, is it, isn't he Dear dad. John? Isn't he Dear John from the TV show? Oh, is he? I think he is. That's how I know him from Dear John. That shows how old I am, by the way. Oh, really? <laughs> you know what he says to me? Mm-hmm. He comes over and he says, uh, happy holidays. It's like it's Christmas. It's like having an intruder in your own home. He was also in a, like Ordinary People, the movie Ordinary People. I've mm-hmm. seen that. Um, John Amos was in it, and he actually also plays himself, kind of. So he was, he made a short cameo when Adam That's Sandler made. asked to use his restroom. Yeah. Um, you and I, because of our age, we know him from, well, he's from a show called Good Times from yes. the 70s. Yeah. But yeah. you and I know him from Fresh Prince, probably. Yeah, <laughs> he played, yeah. like, the fiancé's dad. Howard actually mentions this. And this is really interesting. Tilda Swinton made a, a cameo. You don't see her, though. She what is, is actually the auction manager. Oh, she just does So that's her really. voice. No yeah, way. yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, man. I remind you that you brought the Opal to us on a Friday night for an auction set on a Monday morning. We were lucky to be able I don't to get give a fuck. I don't care. I also kind of wanted to talk about Julie because I think she's my favorite character in this movie. She's a great character. And oh, The Weeknd is in there speaking of Oh, Julie. The Weeknd? Yeah, Weeknd is in there. And so the actress who plays Julie, that's her first ever feature film. And then there's other characters who are part of the jewelry environment scene yeah. industry who are actual new yorkers like even adam sandler's son in the film he has ties to a jewelry business there's a really cool video on youtube you can find them everywhere but they talk about how they casted actual new yorkers for the roles and people in the jewelry industry that kid actually his dad and him were robbed at gunpoint at some point and they heard the story too and they were like oh wow so you really you know the types of people you kind of deal with in this world so it was it was really interesting to have real people there oh i didn't know that so um the julie character she was this is her first it's her first yeah oh nice yeah she was she's just the comedic relief in this movie and (laughs) she's so funny and I, like, I know this girl. Don't you know this girl? Like, I think everybody knows that oh. girl. It's, yeah, yeah, it's like the you. very typical millennial in their own head, on their <laughs> phone all the time. like Taking just, photos. Like, yeah, taking selfies. Like, yeah, we all know that girl. And um, it killed me. I, lo- I think we, I went to go see this with our friend Justina. Yeah. And we were just like roaring when she got the tattoo. And he was, like, (laughs) crying, and he's like, oh, I just wish you were nicer to me. And she's like, I know, but it's really hard. Like, we just, like, burst out laughing, because she's, like, she's also crying, but she, like, still is going to continue to be a jerk. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the plot of the film. Can you you give me a Okay, so this film is about a jeweler named Howard Ratner, who makes a series of bad decisions for two hours and we just see him like constantly destroy his life yeah um he's clearly like a gambling addict and makes a lot of really risky um bets throughout the film the movie revolves around this jewel that he bought from ethiopia from these miners in ethiopia it's a really rare jewel um and it's still kind of like carved in the rock and so the the motive for this movie all re- it all revolves around this this gem. Have you ever heard the term the a MacGuffin? Yes. Yeah. It's the piece or object in the film that just carries the plot. Yeah. So the that that is our MacGuffin is that that jewel. It doesn't really matter. We don't focus too much on on those details of that jewel, yeah. but we know that that's what everybody wants and that's what everybody's after. Here's the funny um, part about that. In American Dad, if you've ever watched the 
the trilogy of the golden turd it's not a trilogy it's a whole episode after episode or mini series within the american dad series Hell, that burrito did a number on my alien stomach. Of the golden turd and see what tragedy befalls the person who owns the, the golden turd. That's how I would sum up this movie, right? <laughs> right there. Yeah. Right? That's, that's pretty much the plot, in my opinion. Yeah. Please go watch that, by the way, if you have not seen it. Oh. It's one of the most brilliant pieces of animation. Like, they, you're watching a comedy and then all of a sudden, um, they actually change the ratio to make it look cinematic yes. and then it goes into this. It's so funny, but it, I mean, those guys are just so brilliant. You, I, you know, it's about to get real when, when that aspect ratio gets cropped. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's about to happen. This is one of the most stressful movies you will ever see in your life. Agreed. For yep. sure. And you kind of know it from the beginning. It takes place in Ethiopia the camera kind of zooms into the small mine, a um, bunch of miners are around it. And there's some kind of chaos going on. And we see that one of the miners got severely hurt. Like his leg is completely broken. You know, there's some people trying to help him and then other words are trying to find the, the jewel. I thought it was really interesting that they started the movie off this way because it, it shows the sacrifice that these miners make. And yeah. not just with this specific jewel, but I think in general with jewelry. And with with the the maybe not even with jewelry with other stuff, but with things that wealthier people around the world benefit from, and how hard these people work, and so you, we see these miners who are clearly in poor working conditions, probably low pay, risking their lives for this, and I think it's really reflective on what we're going to see about Howard. He's a very selfish person. I think they showed you this to show you that look how these people are risking their lives for this one object that somebody wants and how he probably would not care. Even Kevin Garnett brings it up later on. Oh, you know, yeah. when he tells they them, how much did you pay for this? Yeah. And he kind of, Kevin Garnett kind of sees the betrayal. Like, he's trying to get him to realize, like, don't you understand that this might even be cursed? Because don't you understand that you've, you've robbed these people of yeah. something all for your own benefit. And uh, so I thought it was really interesting that they started the movie with that. I like how they have that superstitious spin too, right? Yeah. You mentioned yeah. Ke- the reason why Kevin Garnett wants it because he feels connected to the gem. They even have a little sequence where the gem goes through his essence and he relives parts of his life. He, yeah, he feels a personal um, connection through, like as a black man, kind of when he heard the story you see his eyes light up oh yeah yeah like when he's telling him about these miners well, well yeah he, does, he, sees he doesn't tell them about that part yet i thought he, only yeah, he tells them right before he shows them oh the got it got it yeah, oh, yeah. he's like i got had work i had worked so hard to get this right? yeah yeah but as he's telling them the story he you see kevin garnett kind of like already interested he hasn't even seen the jewel yet and he's oh, yeah. already like where is this from? Where is this happening? And he's kind of like already interested. And yeah, when he sees it, and you see this several times through the movie, which again is why I did not think Kevin Garnett was a basketball player. <laughs> uh, the way he looks at the jewel. Yeah. He's just so, it's so intense. And it's like, it is his everything. It's his whole life. Um, well, it, yeah. And then when he takes it to the game, it helps him get do well in the playoffs. So yes. this, in the historical context is this is happening during a playoff series between the Boston Celtics and the Philadelphia 76ers in the year 2013. Is that right? 2012. 2012. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and that's the other thing too. So part of the plot is Kevin Garnett is says to Adam Sandler's character, to Howard, hey, let me hang on to this gem for this game tonight. And it's so interesting because he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll just, I'll just do it. Though reluctantly, because he still has to sell the gem the next day. And Kevin Garnett gives up his championship ring from the Boston Celtics as collateral for the gem. He takes the gem to the game, he does well, and then Howard has to get the gem back. But then Lakeith's character, Lakeith doesn't have the gem and there's like so much 
unprofessionalism that goes on as well. Yeah. They don't even sign a contract for the objects that they're trading each other, which got me thinking like a real good businessman would not have done that. That is one thing where, it, again, it's so frustrating. Yeah. Because they're like, are you serious? You're just going to hand the celebrity your yeah. most prized possession. And yeah, like you said, no contracts. Nothing is signed. Nothing is like the way he like even pawns his ring. Like, why yeah, yeah. are you doing that? It was, oh yeah. It was like how hard can they Garnett work for that ring? Yeah. He would he would not have I don't think he would have done that in real life. No, it's crazy. It's yeah. like he just keeps making one bad decision after another. <laughs> and again, he's in his own little world. Like he's not thinking about the consequences. They make him seem like such a big jeweler, you know, because all these celebrities come to the store and yeah, everything. Yeah. And like you said, he still does not, exp- he doesn't show that professionalism when it comes to these things, There's which is just weird. Another thing I thought was really strange yeah. is why didn't he just sell it to him? Oh, that's a like, good you know question. how he was like, oh, I want it. Well, Howard thought that the gem was worth over a million something. Uh-huh. And Kevin Garnett only offered about uh, 250,000. So for did the, he offer that at the beginning though? He or did. did he offer it at the end? He did at the beginning. And then Howard's like, no, oh. no, I, I, he thinks he can get a million for it. That's why uh, Kevin Garnett was like, let me just hold on to it and I'll return it got it yeah so that's why he didn't sell uh that's why howard didn't sell the kg so i'm gonna refer to kevin garnett as kg that's what he calls him well that's what he's called and also they used to call him the big ticket that was his basketball nickname um i don't think they mentioned that in the film but that was his nickname in the nba when he first arrived in the beginning of the film you mentioned anxiety right people were talking all over each other yeah I think this carries throughout the whole film, probably 75% of the film. And to me, I thought at first, oh man, this is either bad directing or bad acting where the actors are just talking over each other. But that's exactly the feeling that they wanted to give you. You mentioned it to me. And I think that is super genius of the directors to do that. It was brilliant. And again, from the beginning of the movie, we are still in the title sequence. We're still seeing credits. (laughs) That's true. And he goes to that restaurant to place a bet. Point the uh, six is the cover. Plus one. The point. Let's uh, finish the bet here. Uh, hey, one yeah. thing at a time. I mean, come on now. And <laughs> yes, he's talking, and then the guy is talking over him, like he's like, no, 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 get out of my shot, like get out of my store, get out of my restaurant. He's like, I don't want to see you. And uh, one thing that I thought was really interesting is that in every conversation that these characters have there's always one character that's brushing the other one off. Like no matter how stressful the situation is. So one example is at the beginning part, he says, no, 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 get out of my restaurant. And then Howard just proceeds to go on with his bet. Like even though this guy was like, get out of my face. He's like, I want to place a bet on this team. I want to place a bet on this. And he like keeps talking. And then the other guy starts automatically taking the bet. And he's like, okay, you want this, this, and this. And then someone calls Howard, he picks up his phone, and the other guy is still talking. He's talking to the person on the phone. I mean, it is just like, (laughs) it's so crazy. And it, like you said, it continues through most of the film. It's it's very rare that we see characters that are slowly talking to each other. Julie does this a lot where she, he's yelling at her and she brushes it off, like whatever. Um, another one of my favorite funniest parts of the film is he's yelling at her and he's like, I'm fucking exhausted. And all you do is party. And she goes, okay, do you want to be mad at me? Or do you want to get in bed and cuddle? Like, and she just, (laughs) (laughs) he's so angry. That's the beginning, right? Yeah. At the beginning. And like, he's about to cry. He's so angry. And she's like, okay, calm down. Like you're getting crazy. Just go. I actually really agreed with her on that point. <laughs> he's, he, he just needed like a Snickers or something. And yeah, you just want to like, just take a chill pill. Like, just relax. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's it. It's just like, you're right. It continues throughout the whole movie where people are just constantly talking about each other. The main conflict 
in the movie was between Howard and his brother-in-law, which they do a really cool reveal during dinner. I, I, I didn't know. I don't know. Did they ever mention that before? No. So that was a awesome reveal. Like the person who's going after Howard beating him up for the money that Howard owes him is his own brother-in-law. That reveal at the dinner table scene when they're- Oh, so good. Right? The, like we were saying, like the guy who he owes money to, who he sends his goons to beat up is Howard. And you find out that his brother-in-law is the one he owes. This whole time, these three guys are chasing, it's like the boss and his two goons and he's always sending them. And the whole, up until that point, you just hear these phone conversations with these guy with this guy who sounds super dangerous. He's yeah. gonna come after him, and there is a Passover meal. Um, the family, or Howard's family, is Jewish. They're having this big Passover meal. Oh, what the? He opens a door to a bathroom, and there is a guy that we thought this whole time was this huge villain. And for a second, you're like, what is he doing here? Like, the <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you're like, oh, that's his brother-in-law. There's a few minutes, right, where we still don't know how he's in the family. Because I think the dad says, like, oh, look at, he just comes in here to my house and he says this. And yeah, it was such a great reveal where I was like, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> the scene before that, we see Arno, right, in the mm -hmm. car with the goons. We didn't know their connection yet how they were no, actually yeah. connected uh, via um, his sister? No, I think you're right. Because part of the intrigue is how do these goons know that he's at his kid's school play? Oh, yeah, yeah. And did, so I, now I, you're I like, oh, now it makes that. sense. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Yeah, yeah, thought. his brother-in-law told him. And then also before that, because during the, Howard tries to get back with his wife. But before that, Julie had a thing with The weekend. I felt that Julie wasn't going to cheat. Oh, well, it kind of felt like it was weird, right? Yeah. Had he not she, shown up, would, would she have cheated? Yes? You know, that's a good question. I, she has the image and the attitude of a gold digger. Uh, how yeah, they yeah. portray gold diggers in movies. Yeah, yeah. But you, get, you do get a sense that she's actually really in love with him throughout I the agree. movie. Yeah. So yeah, that's a good question. Like, would she have, she was kind of pushing the weekend away. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. If she was not in love with him and if she was truly like a gold digger, I think she would have just, we would have seen that immediately. Mm -hmm. Where like the weekend was hitting on her and she would have automatically taken advantage of it. Yeah. So you do but, kind of get the sense that maybe she, maybe she wouldn't have cheated because. Or, or she was an opportunist where a professional where she's networking in the bathroom doing some coca. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the weekend, you know, and, and the weekend was was coming on to her too. The funny part about that scene was when they walk outside. Have you ever seen that skit from Key and Peel called Megan? No. <laughs> Where Jordan Peel, right? Um, he's like he's a he's the girlfriend, and then Key is the boyfriend, and they're having this argument at a club. And she starts walking away and she's oh. like, no, don't follow me. Once Key stops following her, she stops. She turns around and looks at him. And then they start arguing some more. And she's like, come back. And he's like, no. But if you ever have a chance to check that skit out, it's so funny. And yeah. it, it's really, it's a really great observation of what, how couples fight in the club, especially when they're outside. It's yeah, so like, no, I want you to follow me, but don't follow me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want you to care, but don't care. But you're right that it did seem that Julie really loved him, especially she got that tattoo. Either she's yeah, really we crazy. See that at the she, end. she doesn't come off as super crazy. It seems like she's very in control of what she's doing. It's it. She's a really interesting character. You brush her off as dumb and kind of like an airhead. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she makes these decisions in the movie that are very smart and that yeah kind of shows humane side of her yeah and, and i thought it balanced it really well with this whole selfie taking party girl personality uh but you do see these really great moments with her 
And so I thought it was it was a really great character. I want to talk about my favorite character in the movie. He's the the guy who um, the goon. Oh yeah. Who He's are we putting like spoiler alert before this? No, no. You or you should guys we have not had time. It? You've had time. The guy who ends up shooting him. <sighs> yeah. Um. This guy, I left the i was like the credits went up at the movie theater mm-hmm. and i immediately reached for my phone and i'm like <laughs> what else has this guy been in because i want to see him in everything yeah and he's never been in anything from what i found i think one other movie that i've never heard of yeah yeah i am fascinated with actors watching actors not say anything i think you can see someone's best acting when they have no dialogue and this guy was so i don't even know if he's an actor um i thought i read somewhere that he was he he was previously like a crew member well my understanding he was actually a first responder and he was part of the first responders for 9-11 so what really yeah yeah oh my god he is so good and my favorite scene of the whole movie is when they're trapped in between those two doors oh and yeah i was like immediately hooked on this guy because he kept following him and you could see him thinking yeah and yeah. you know he's gonna do something yeah and so and the way he looks at him it was just so it's stuff that they teach us to do in acting class and this guy did it so well. Um, you see him plot, plotting yeah. and kind of thinking about what he's going to do. And it was just, he was so brilliant and he did it so well. Um, this because, silent character that that was so powerful and we don't even know it until the, the end. audience was feeling that sigh of relief as the that game was going on, right? He was going to yeah. win those veg, uh, the bets that he hedged or parlayed and then when adam sandler won you're like oh all right cool it's over happy ending he's gonna give them their money they're gonna leave happy it's cool yeah we just think it's it's like a big sigh of relief and then all of a sudden he just walks up to him i thought that adam sandler was just gonna i would have also i thought and i would have opened the door to let them out that way i would not never have let them come back in. One of the other parts, one of the many parts in this movie where you're screaming at the screen. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that was one of them. Where you're like, what are you doing? Don't let them back in. Like, chase, let, let them go at the other one and just stay there until they go away. <laughs> like, don't yeah, do yeah. that. You know who's another good actor who's who has that strong silent type? Michael Shannon. You know oh, Michael name? Shannon. Oh, Great. Right. The Iceman, have you seen The Iceman? No, I call them paint a wall actors. Mm-hmm. Like if I really like an actor, I always say yeah. like I can watch them paint a wall for three hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's yeah. one of those where I'm just like, I'll watch Michael Shannon do anything. Like he's just he's so good. Um, but yeah, this guy just did. Su- I can't believe this is his first role because he he did such an amazing job. Adia Menzel is a very typical strong mom character mm. she that's a that's a tough lady like i would yeah. not be on that woman's bad side because <laughs> she's like in charge she knows what to do um she is there is not one mo- moment in this film where you see her think about taking her husband back which is really interesting because howard is very manipulative he usually gets uh, yeah. his way with a lot of people and he cannot break her. There's not one moment where usually when we see this relationship of somebody going through a divorce, mm-hmm. you still see a moment of one person thinking, gosh, maybe this was a wrong decision. Maybe I should stay with them. You do not see that from her. Yeah. And she's kind of the only person who reads through his bullshit and who, who's just like, nope, not getting involved in this. I'm cutting ties with this. I'm done. Um, but she, you know, she's fantastic. I really liked her. There was this interview where she mentions that Adam Sandler's kids were so hyped that she was in this movie, but Adam Sandler wouldn't let 
his kids see the movie. Like they came on set one day and they're like, Oh, sorry, you can't watch this scene. We can't because she's playing a different type of character, right? Yeah. They know her from Frozen. They he doesn't want to see them see her like cussing, cussing up a storm. And I think there was a time one of them was selling a braiding a birthday and she called her up and sang frozen with her i was like oh that's really cool oh that's sweet yeah so she seems like, she seems like a really genuine person like nice yeah person. i've heard nothing but like good things about her like she's a really really uh great person really nice um she i only know her from believe it or not i haven't seen frozen <laughs> i only know her from uh <laughs> yeah i've never seen it um i am really you will learn this from our movie reviews I am terrible with Disney movies. I have seen very few Disney movies. It's only until somebody like makes me watch them. But as a kid, I was watching these movies. <laughs> so, oh, okay. That, I mean, that I makes mean, sense. My mom and my parents, and I was just talking to a friend about this. I really love this about them, but they kind of watch what they wanted to watch. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. I think turned out really great for me. Um, but yeah, we, I mean, of course we watch Disney movies, but there's very few, there's a lot, even the classic ones that I haven't seen. So I only know Adina Menzel from Wicked. Okay. From, from the musical Wicked, which is That's like. I, I saw you pause a little bit when I said Frozen. You're like, wait, she is Frozen. Yeah, I was like, oh, right. She's <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I don't know anything. I mean, I know the song because they play, they played it everywhere. She, yeah, I thought she did a fantastic job. She did a really good job. That last scene with Kevin Garnett and and it's funny too because his last name's Garnett and Garnett is a jammer. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Steven Universe. <laughs> During that conversation, right, Arno and Phil were waiting for them to finish their Kevin Garnett's conversation. Editing wise, it was super interesting because Kevin Garnett never just walks by them during that cut. He's there in the office with them and then he's just gone. Cause then Howard walks out and he confronts Arno and Phil. You're right. I right? was really, yeah, I was really, conf I was kind of confused about that because he has had kind of an interaction with them before, not directly like his security guards have yeah yeah so i thought that was you're right i thought that was kind of weird i was like oh you didn't see him he didn't yeah i felt like that would have been super tense right that would yeah. have been another tense moment in the film like how are you saying there's anxiety all over the place in the movie even the scene where he takes uh howard takes his son up to use the bathroom and he leaves he has his son go in the neighbor's bathroom and that big guy comes out i'm like oh my gosh i hope nothing bad happens to his son because yeah. the movie is just full of those moments, one right after the other. Every scene. If, if, it plays, I've always wanted to go to New York. I've never been to New York. Oh. Um, but I gotta tell you, I'm a very <laughs> bright, like I'm a very bright, happy girl from California. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know how well, like I might cry with my first interaction with someone in New York because every time <laughs> oh. I've seen anything take place in New York, these people are like fucking harsh like they are like, oh, <laughs> they're very like upfront and like a lot of them look like they're just in a bad mood all the time like i don't know <laughs> what okay. it is great point i have relatives from new york so my idea of going to new york i was always very apprehensive about going just because oh everyone thinks pe new york people are so rude and i have this conversation a lot with people who've been to new york or who have lived in new york New York people are just direct. They're just super upfront. And at the same time, I feel like they're so super helpful and friendly. The way that they may project their voice may come off as rude or mean because we're over here laid back in California. We learned that in New York that the liquor stores close early, like at 11. So if you wanted to get a bottle and hang out and drink, you have to go on a hunt. and when we were asking people just where we can find alcohol, everyone like was trying to help. There's this one guy we asked and he goes, yeah, you just want to go 11th and 22nd or over there and you'll see, just turn to the right and that bodega is open or whatever it was. And it was really cool because 
we were already a block out and it looked like we were making a wrong turn. He walk, he goes towards us, like walking, goes, no, 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 you want to go this way. And I was like, damn, like, these guys are really helping us find alcohol, which is really cool. Yeah, despite everything I've seen in movies and TV shows, I've heard that. Oh, that yeah, people right. are just like, no, they're really helpful and they're really like great people. Yeah, just very tough. And the guy that answers the door when Howard wants his son to use a restroom, immediately, like, you see his chest out. Like, what do you want? Pumped up. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What do you, and you're like, oh, my God, this is our neighbor. <laughs> like, it's just yeah, yeah. so, yeah. So um, thing is, when you walk in New York, make sure you don't stop or make sure you move to the side because everyone's trying to get to where they're going. And it's nothing rude. It's not being rude or anything. It's they're just, just in a hurry. People are busy. Yeah, they got shit to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that you're right. That just you even in this what's supposed to be an okay calm scene, you're like yeah. stressed out. You're like, oh my god. I, like, oh, <laughs> gonna, I I even thought that he would find Julie dead in her closet in the closet. Yeah, when they had that song playing. Yeah. In the apartment, and I was like, oh, something bad happened. Or like, I thought the weekend was in there as well, and. She wanted oh, she's him with to someone. catch them. Yeah. Yeah. In the act. Julie went straight to work like nothing happened. Remember? And I think that that's, that's another part of why I thought that she was kind of like this gold digger character. Ah, okay. She seemed not to care, but when he's all beat up and he's hiding in his office, you see her walk in and she, she's already kind of getting teary-eyed from seeing him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she's, like, so sad that they got in this big fight. Yeah, she goes back to work right away, like, nothing happened, and it's just, this whole film is just so tense. What did you think about the auction? When the second he asked his dad, <laughs> he was like, here we go. I was like, why? <laughs> why do you keep making these horrible decisions? Don't do that. Yeah, yeah. I did think it was, I think that whole, I don't know how auctions work, but I thought that was pretty messed up. Like, oh, I was like, that he had a plan. Yeah, that they could change the price and not tell you oh. until minutes before. I was like, that's fucked up. Like, that's not his fault. That's fucked up. This is a movie about learning how to be professional, right? Wow. There's so many people in this movie were super unprofessional. But they were upset with him because he brought the gem super late. Oh, they that's were, true. He was supposed to get it appraised, but Lakeith character didn't bring the gem back and that's when they had to drive to Philadelphia and then he just leaves Adam Sandler or Howard high and dry at the practice facility and you know what but again that's yeah. Howard's fault because he went into his he's he's a very show-off he's a big show-off uh-huh he goes and grabs a basketball from these people yes. and he's like oh watch me shoot blah blah well asshole look what you did to yourself because now he because you gave him an opportunity to just ditch you like yeah, he yeah, didn't yeah. Go in the first place but because again he was so busy being selfish mm -hmm. this happened to him so you're saying that they probably wouldn't have learned on a short notice if he had brought it on time they would have kept the appraisal higher i believe yeah. That was just the way to get back at him for not bringing it in on time so that way they could give the right first bid amount in the auction. Even the auction, I wish we had, I had a tally. I'm probably going to try to put this in graphics. But of <laughs> how much he assumed he was going to get, how much KG was going to pay for it. Was it one, was that 170000 or 70000 I think he said a hundred and seven. No, a hundred and seventy thousand. Correct. Right. That yeah. was his budget, and then I guess Car Kevin Garnett's financial advisor was next to him, and she's like, "Nope." Yeah. <laughs> that was so funny because she's like the mom. Yeah, yeah. Or like yeah. the wife, she's like, "No, no, no, you're not spending past this much." Yeah. Yeah, and that was super interesting about how much he was going to spend. KG was going to buy it off 250000 in the beginning. So he lost about 80000 right there. And I'm wondering if he had pulled it. Uh -huh. Remember they gave him, they said, no, 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 either that's the appraisal or we pull it. Yeah. Like, that was another thing. I was like, why didn't he just pull it? 
and sell it to Kevin and be like, here you go. Well, he was trying to up the price by having his dad sit in. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He, he wanted was, it more than 250 Correct. He wanted yeah. more than 250 He thought it was going to go for a million, but bad choices. Oh, so bad. <laughs> Unprofessionalism. So bad. Yeah. Is that the right word? Unprofessional. They're yeah. So unprofessional. Um, and so I wonder how much the auction company got as a percentage of that sale. Because that's how they make their money. Yeah. I wonder... You're right. I wonder how much they get. Like, I wonder if it depends on the company or if um, they all kind of get the same thing. Have you ever been to an auction? No. I wish. Have you? Yeah. I I bought this, like, it was, I've only been to one and I bought a Popeye, um, I forgot what they're called. It's a still. It's a Popeye still. Oh, like a One sell? of the originals. And it's it's a cell, but it has like a double la- the color layer over it. Oh, cool! It's really cool. It's one of the original um, stills, and I was like, I gotta have that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was funny because we were on this boat, we were on this cruise with my family, yeah. and they had this like it's all this like artwork, like fancy Renaissance, you know, whatever. I don't know anything about art, and then they pull out to paint or two other pieces of art one is a Popeye one and the other one is a Hanna-Barbera like huge frame with all their characters definitely was not going to be able to afford because it was signed by Hanna and Barbera so I was like I'm not going to be able to afford that like Hanna-Barbera is two people or one person two okay okay okay. two it's their last names um but yeah and so I was like well I can't afford that one but I can afford that and no, but it was really nerve wracking because I was like, please don't go up. Let me have this. And it was yeah. really funny because at the time I was still, um, I was still pretty young. Like I was in my early twenties maybe. And uh, yeah, I, I was just sitting in a place where I clearly should not be. I'm like wearing <laughs> and a t-shirt and everybody else is in like suits and dresses. This was on a cruise? It was a cruise. Yeah. And it was by... Oh, what is the name of that? It's a really famous like art company. This was like a legit paddle one. This isn't like a, I've been to a silent auction. They're pretty quiet. No, it was like but... you hold up the little panels, whenever they yeah. call. And I was just like looking at people, giving them the sad look. Like, let me, please let me have this. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you, you pull out the puppy it. eyes? Yeah. How many, how many um, times did you actually go um, lift the paddle up and how? How was that back and forth between the second highest bidder and you? Yeah, there was, they, I kept raising it. I think the other person, they didn't push very hard for it. Oh, okay. I think eventually they gave up and I was like, whoa! And I was like so excited. Was like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, so I wonder, you're right, that's a good question. Like, I wonder what the percentage is that they get. Yeah, because um, then if KG was going to buy 170 he sells for 170, correct? That's what the price goes for at the auction. Yeah. 170, you would think at least 20% of that. So in a well, sense he gets him he uh, in his office, he gives him 165. KG, because he gives yeah. it cut to um Lakeith's character. I forgot what his name is. But no, to he gives Howard in his office. He yeah. he puts the bag down. And he says, here it is, 165. Correct, because the other 10 went to uh, Lakeith's character. Oh, it went to him. Yeah, because he said, oh. like, that's his finder's fee. So yeah. So he up with that. So when you think about the math, it would be 170. His dad doesn't really have to pay, so that's a wash. That 170 is a wash, but the 20% he would owe to the company I, I don't know what off the top of my head. Let's just say that's 20,000 just to even it out. So uh-huh. the 165 that he actually gets from Kevin Garnett, 20 of that will go to the, the company. So he's really at 145. So he lost 100,000 uh, off that. Yeah. Not selling right away. Yeah, I think you're right because he mentions that when he's telling him about 
how he thinks that he is ripping off these hey, minors. You understand? Oh, yeah. I think he mentions that. He mentions the, he's like, so you doubled your money, your money or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It can add up to 170. Because so right. he paid 30,000 for it. Uh huh. Or something like I think it was like 30,000. Yeah, it wasn't high. Yeah. Um, but essentially, yes, he did. He did double his money for yeah. all for all that work. Does Arno die at the end as well? He gets yeah, shot. he got shot. Oh, man, by a Phil. Like, like such a badass in this whole thing. I know. Yeah, again, another bad decision made by Arno. <laughs> like, don't run away. Just stay here. You know. Um, but I also thought. Phil made a bad decision by I mean I guess he got all that jewelry in the end. So he oh, got he's something. gonna get caught. Is yeah, he's one, he's gonna get caught, and two, it's like you're never gonna get that money because you just killed the two people who know where it is. Oh yeah, because it, it was part yeah. of it was some he had to go unless he had Oh no no no. He has to go find Julie and that's it. Yeah. That's where he would get the money. Yeah. So, but like you find- said, it's like they're probably going to get caught immediately after that. Yeah. He's never going to get a chance to like find Julie. <laughs> <laughs> there was just too much. And then Julie, we don't know what her ending is. The whole I idea. I totally thought that guy. The orange guy. Yeah, the orange, the, the cartoon character, as the other yeah. character calls him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I totally thought when he was bringing the bag i was like oh shit he's working with them or something i thought too i thought like he was gonna walk out with it but um i mean she played she was opportunist opportunist and she played her cards right with that guy yeah i was i was scared for her too during that time that was probably the one happy ending in this whole thing is that she got away and like she's fine yeah but no so stressful because i was i just i was like someone's gonna catch her but she's going straight back to Howard, right? That's where yeah. she, she doesn't know about what happened yet. No. Yeah, it doesn't know yet. Man. Yeah. There's a lot of crazy themes. Like the, the theme of greed is very secular in this movie. Yeah. Right? Howard can't stop. He, he finally gets the money, but he still can't stop making those bets because he wants to make more. Yeah, very selfish. Um, you can tell that he's a gambling addict because he keeps placing these crazy bets. Um, and yeah, just doesn't really have a, you know, he he doesn't even care. He doesn't even seem that concerned that they were going after Julie. Yeah. Like he, he just kind of, there's this one moment like, oh, just go straight to the hotel, blah, blah, blah. And he doesn't even care that they're like, go find her. That the goons like call the other guys and are like, "Oh, she's in here. Go find her." Did he call? He didn't even call her, right? You're right. He didn't even call her. Said like, "Hey, they might be after you." No. No, not at all. No, no, no. He just told her at the beginning Go when to he the told her about the when he told her about the flight. He's like, "You're gonna get on this flight. You're gonna land straight on there." But he did kind of warn. He's like, "Oh, some people might be yeah. after, you, so be careful." But yeah, he never called her after that. I feel like with all this, with all the tragedy in the movie. He might as well have just had like a A24 on the bullet. <laughs> that, yeah. that's, the bullet. that's how tragic it is. All right. Now, my favorite part of the show. Drum roll, please. Kijan, did they mention San Diego? No. No shout out for, the, for our hometown. No. This is why KG's still on my list, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm going to say. I know KG's never going to listen to this. Maybe, maybe not. He doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But as a as a person, I think he's a, he seems like a really cool guy. But in the NBA, he was such a loudmouth, very much like Howard, and like soft too. You know how Howard gets punched in the face? KG never got punched in the face. But he would always try to instigate. He would push someone and then like back up. Like he wasn't ready to fight. He was ready to push and have the officials – kind of placate everyone and keep him safe. Little troublemaker. He's definitely a troublemaker. But again, he did a great job in this movie. I laughed so hard when you told me, when I told you that I didn't know that he was an actor. And <laughs> you said, oh, he's an actor. And I laughed so hard. <laughs> that is a great point. And by the I way, like, you- 
I'm wearing LeBron James, and this is probably the one person he does not like in the NBA or while he played. All water under the bridge. But during the time, I've, I've always been a big LeBron James fan before he went to the Lakers. KG was not a guy I would root for, for sure. Yeah, um, I, I shouldn't say I don't. I know nothing about sports. I do watch yeah. soccer. Oh, yeah. But I thought, I laughed when you said that because it reminded me of soccer players, how they just like themselves on the field they're like oh my god i'm dying and just so dramatic so i thought that was really funny and i was like i know what he's talking about (laughs) (laughs) and um so this kind of wraps up everything i definitely would recommend the movie to anyone who's an adam sandler fan an nba fan too because they do have the historical context of when this plot happens during the playoffs against uh celtics versus the 76ers and anything else you would want people to know going into the movie? No, it's 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 fantastically well written. It's just so well written. Yeah. It's so good. Uh, like you mentioned before, these people talking over each other and you think like, <laughs> is yeah. this purposely? I thought that was really amazing. Great actors, great cameo. Adam Sandler was robbed for the Oscar nomination. <laughs> he should have yeah, been nominated. Yeah, yeah. yeah, go watch it. It's And you know, now it's accessible to you through Netflix so you don't have really have an excuse unless you don't don't have netflix but watch it um it's it's a great movie it's a great film all right so guys that was uncut gems kijan i know you have other uh you have a podcast that you sh- want people to listen to you want to sh- give a quick plug about it yeah we have a podcast called a uh, microwave coffee podcast and we just talk about different things um just random subjects anything and everything um our first episode was on kobe i think that's one of our most popular episodes it was like one of the most listened to episodes yeah yeah um it was uh great we did not uh we did record that before he passed away so just like a heads up we didn't know at that time um but yeah you can listen to us on there uh you can follow me on uh instagram at kijan mustard yeah we should actually um do a like a mini version of this for Dear Basketball, the the Kobe animation that won him an Oscar. For sure, because I cool. still haven't seen that. It's been on my yeah. list since we did that episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I know it's going to make me sad. Right. <laughs> just, um, I am not a, um, even though I love horror movies, Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sensitive to when I know that a movie is going to be sad, I just don't yeah, yeah. watch it. Um, Kyle always said, my husband always says, like, I'm dead inside because I never cry during movies. And it's true. But I do, I also don't want to watch sad movies. Um, oh, yeah. So that was one of the movies that I avoided. I actually avoided uh, Good Time, which is the Softy Brothers' first feature film before Uncut oh. Gems. Okay. For that very reason. Because I, I saw a trailer and I was like, this isn't going to be good. Like, nothing about this is going to be happy. I don't know if I want to watch this. Um, but okay. yeah, I will watch Dear Basketball. I heard it's fantastic. And what was the podcast name again? Microwave Coffee Podcast. Awesome. You guys go ahead and check that out. Also, check out Why Not Collective on YouTube, Instagram. And yeah, we have some really cool content. I'm also going to be doing a shoe series. I got a lot of pen marks. Oh, snap. I was just going to say, those are a lot of shoes. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually have a pair of Kobe's that I didn't wear until he passed. And Oh, nice. A lot of people ask me if they could buy some of these. I'm like, nah, it's cool. Like, I wouldn't want to make a profit off of Kobe. Um, yeah. But yeah, I definitely want to do a review of Dear Basketball. It's like a five minute short. So, but it's, we, I can definitely break down the historical context for you, Kijan. Yes, I would love that. <laughs> yay, yay, sports. Um, so the yeah. next episode of Have You Seen, we're going to be watching Tiger Tail. And it's by uh, Alan Yang. It's a Netflix original. Mm-hmm. um so yeah we'll be talking about that yeah and if you don't know who alan yang is he was a director and producer and also a writer of master of none starring in season sorry so if you haven't checked out master of none check that out as well yeah but please do it's funny we just want to thank you guys for listening uh to the show uh kijan want to wave us out <laughs> bye guys thank you guys Enjoy.